Welcome back, everybody. Last time we were journeying through this pain in the ass cave. It's well fallen, and let's get the hell out of here. Uh, I forget if I showed these and I got ambushed. Whatever. I forget if I showed the horses. I think the horses are the only thing in this area that do not multiply when you hit them. Everything else does. Damn. I killed him in one hit anyways. Yeah, see, they don't multiply. These, these, are, these are the only enemies. I think there's one, this one, and maybe another one that does not multiply when you hit them physically. Otherwise, every other enemy does. And, like I said, those horses have six legs. Yeah, I think we saw those. I cannot remember. And everyone gained some levels. Hurrah! So we're almost there. There's a thing right here you can head down. And it's like a... Peer through to kind of tease you. You can't go any further than that. Yeah, after editing all those random battles, holy cow, I had like 18 minutes and after editing all the random battles, came to like less than 14. I think I had 19 something in terms of battle statted out, 19 minutes worth, and holy crap, did that ever drop it. So here we are, the final fang, the earth fang, and apparently someone's guarding it. And it is Hecaton. Uh, it's not too bad as long as you have a good healthy supply of bios, and you know what? Come in here at full health and just use your white mage to cast arrow two. Uh, yeah, arrow two. This guy, I believe it's this guy, is actually a summon is named after him in Final Fantasy XIII. The Neil summon is actually named after him. I think it's shortened in uh, this version. That hurt. Yeah, Bio and Arrow 2 will really do short work of them. But yeah, he's uh, he's a summon that pairs in Final Fantasy XIII for Vanille. Now, I don't know if he is... I don't, well, I guess if he's guarding the Fang and the Fangs protect Zinbi, I'm assuming he's a helper of Zinbi, or I'm not sure. They don't really say. It's just taking kind of a wild guess. Alright, so we're gonna use magic to get out of here. And I am going to. I will meet you at the Nautilus. So here we are at the Nautilus. We're gonna take it for a little spin because remember, the invincible can't go underwater. Uh, there's a little place right down it's around here somewhere. The end of uh, the peninsula here, where Goldor's mansion was. Here we go. There's this cave that I mystically took for the Temple of Time. It wasn't, and it's an optional area where uh, ah, I'm ambushed. It's an optional area where you don't have to uh, you don't have to come here, but you can probably pretty much come here as soon as you're you get the Nautilus. The enemies here aren't too tough, especially right now. That was pathetic. So I've switched up my party a bit just simply to give you a preview of... Apparently I forgot to equip my hunter. My bad. That's okay, you can just go in empty. I don't have any arrows on me, I'll have to buy those later. That's okay. Enemies here aren't strong enough for me to have, really have a problem with. In the case, fairly short. So the hunter? Can use level one to three black uh, white magic, not counting arrow. 
as well as um, in the DS version. He has um, Barrage, what hits uh, four random targets with arrows. It's nothing, uh, it's nothing spectacular, but as the job increases, it uh, you gotta switch the spells. Crap. As the job increases, it does more damage. What I forgot to do. But he loses the ability to use white magic. But I mean, that's okay. They they make the scholar a little more useful by allowing the scholar to use level uh, three white, black, and white magic. So. Also, I have the thief equipped with two oricons or whatever they're called, and they're absorbing the HP at a pretty standard rate. I mean, most of these enemies you're probably going to run into on the world map somewhere, so they're nothing super spectacular. There we go. Victory is ours. Well, first thing I'm gonna do is gonna swap magic with Raphia. Yeah. See, I'm gonna lose level three magic, but for this area, that's all I'm gonna need. The enemies aren't super powerful or anything, but they will dwindle your HP after a while. Defender. See, most of the items here you could have gotten at uh, uh what was? Uh, it was at um, Temple of Time. So yeah, you, you could have come here by then, before then, or right after then. Like I said, this is an optional place and not necessary. Uh, as for the bard, bard has a sing command instead of an attack, but sing is sing is pretty much an attack, except that it uh, each harp has sort of a different status eye effect. Like the Llama Harp, which I have equipped now, causes confusion. Now in the DS version, the Bard's really actually useful because depending on the Harp you have equipped, if you select the Sing command, first off, it's a back row item. So you'll be able to uh, attack with really good damage, like the Harp has really good damage in the DS version. But, uh... The Sing Command, depending on the harp you have, will have some beneficial status effects to your party as well. Like one of them will actually cure for like decent HP recovery, like you, like two to three hundred per turn on all your party members. So I mean that's pretty damn useful, especially in the long run, since it doesn't cost any uh, MP to use. They can heal your party every single turn, as well as some stuff like sh casting shell and protect, so if you unequip and equip different harps and sing, you can buff up your party and he can become a real asset to your party. These things are small slow creatures I think you face underwater, they're not too powerful, weak to lightning. Super califragic mothers, alright. Okay, I seem to be well. I think we've hit most of the enemies. Scare, what that does, I believe, lowers the enemies' hit hit percent or weakens them or something. And cheer, I believe, boosts your character's defense and magic. I can't remember what the I think they only have sing command in the DS version. I they might have the cheer command or the scare command, I'm, I forget which one. You show them for six. There you go. I didn't see what that did. The text went by too quickly. So we have won the day once again. 
The Lunath has gained the level. Actually, everybody's gained the level. I've been pretty good about keeping Tomahawk and keeping my party at uh, around the same amount of experience. Just so the party's not uneven in terms of the levels, everybody's at about the same level. By the way, make sure you have a good clean inventory before you come into here. Like this is pretty much just a tre treasure trove of everything you need. Goods, mostly diamond, like it's all the diamond stuff. Let's go with the Temple of Time right after, doesn't really matter, there's not very many places you can go exploring underwater or anything, it's, I think this is like only two or maybe three areas. So we got ourselves an air knife. Oh, wrong character. That is a dagger, I believe. Okay. 138 doesn't do anything special. It's a lot stronger, though. So I shall equip that for now. And Loki, which is a. Uh, Harp? Yeah, see, look at the harps aren't very. Oh, they're they're two-handed. Here we go. I believe Loki casts um, confusion or sleep. I forget which one. So you'll notice there's a secret passage here. This kind of teaches you about the secret passage as well. Each one of these chests has a monster in it. So blood spear, spear for uh... oh, what's his name? I better heal up here too. Is the spear for the dragon? These things are nothing strong if you have uh, obviously don't come into this with, with this ridiculous party. Go with a standard comfortable party. You know, white mage, black mage, knight, monk, my, it's generally my standard party. Argus? Agus? I forget. Ah, uh, zombie dragon. Ah, uh, 400 HP loss. Ah, uh, gonna heal that right away. Ah, uh, you can't do anything, bard. Uh, I don't wanna just steal from him. Stop hitting him, damn it. Damn it. See, that's pretty good damage. Ooh, found a potion. Alright, let's speed this up. Okay, well, I hurt myself. Finish him. Well, actually, it, the Dark Sword doesn't do as much damage as it should to undead enemies, obviously. We'll switch up the row here. Triton, hammer for the Viking. And an Eater. You should remember these guys from the uh, previous dungeon. Yeah, see, Bard is actually not that bad. He's got some good physical attacks. Not as bad people call him, or think they are. That's why in Final Fantasy IV, the years after, Edwards is like a freaking killing machine. He does, um... They really boost his attack in uh, Edward, the prince there. They really boost his attack in the, uh... Oh, come on. The years after. becomes an extremely useful character. 
Yeah, I think scare causes the enemies to run away or something. How? So sorry for taking all your time, but this is just a little extra cave if you want some treasure. It's always good. I'm going to exit the hell out of here, and in the next episode I will meet you at uh, Dorga's place. Thank you for watching, and have a good day. Bye.